The future of solar energy depends on a union of new and old technologies. If photovoltaic or PV devices that turn light into electricity could be mass produced with printing presses as if they were newspapers or banknotes, they could be affordable and ubiquitous. Conventional silicon based solar panels are rigid and bulky. Small, thin and flexible devices on films are already being made that are lightweight and translucent. These use little material and can generate electricity in low light even indoors. Integrating them into phones and watches as well as walls and windows would transform the world's energy generation, reduce pollution and mitigate climate change. Yet flexible solar panels face several hurdles. Some are based on harmful substances such as heavy metals and their manufacture uses hazardous solvents. Others are quick to degrade and inefficient in converting light to electricity. Printers used in the publishing, computing and electronics industries struggle to print PV materials that need to be built to nanometer precision over many square meters. For all these reasons, printable solar cells are yet to find a foothold in electricity markets. Currently, most research and development investment goes into conventional silicon solar cells, which account for more than 90% of global production. Yet manufacturing these uses a lot of energy. It's been estimated equivalent to around 10% of the cell's entire lifetime output. Printed solar cells won't become widespread until they're cheaper and safer to make. Researchers and businesses must work together to improve the efficiency, environmental impact and stability of these cells and also to scale up their manufacture and plan their market deployment. Power that a PV panel generates is proportional to the surface area exposed to sunlight. Globally, we consume around 20,000 terawatt hours of electricity each year. Meeting this need will require enough PV devices to cover an area of 100,000 square kilometers or an area size of Iceland. Scaling up production globally is yet to be achieved at this level. Printed PV devices are typically made from many layers of material on a substrate of conductive glass or plastic. Each layer is a function. Semiconductors or sanitizers absorb visible light, and other materials carry electric charge to electrodes. Many types of printed PV devices are being developed. Some feature organic semiconductors, such as polythiophenes. Others use light-absorbing dyes, and another substrate contain quantum dot solar cells, or nanoparticles, that absorb light. The most efficient, though, are the perovskite-based cells. The latest version of these convert 22% of the solar power to electrical power. This is more efficient than solar cells made from multi-crystalline silicon. But yet they can't currently be rolled out commercially because they degrade under high humidity and heat. Furthermore, printing layers that are nanometers to micrometers thick uniformly without pinholes over many square meters is exceptionally difficult. The electronics industry commonly uses screen printing, feeding a paste through perforated screens, but the layers in printed circuit boards are hundreds of times thicker than those of PV devices, and turning materials into viscous paste alters their physical and electrical properties. Other techniques for printing PV devices have been demonstrated in the lab over areas of around 10 square centimetres. These include feeding ink through slit or slot dye printing, spray coating the substrate, passing the substance over a rotating cylinder and moving a blade of the substrate to ensure a consistent supply. Sadly, each technique has downsides. In slot dye printing, for example, the spacing of patterns is hard to control and gaps reduce the active area of a panel. In gravar printing, contact between the printing head and the substrate can damage the underlying layers. Such drawbacks mean that currently the printed solar cells are less than half as efficient as the best non-printed equivalents. To print thin, pinhole-free layers over more than one square meter will require an intelligent, more precise equipment and laser processing technique. Clearly, therefore, an alternative attractive approach will be to develop PV materials that work with existing industrial printing methods. For industrial scale printing, this involves materials that can be formed into light, liquid solutions or pastes. For PV devices, this means either using uh, solutions of chemicals, polymers, dyes and such like, or dispersions of nanoparticles such as the quantum dots. But many of these degrade over days to weeks if not properly sealed, and more stable alternatives such as silicon are far harder to print. A balance must also be struck between the efficiency of a device and the environmental impacts of its manufacture. 
The most efficient thin film solar cells include toxic or rare materials such as cadmium and lead, as well as hazardous organic solvents. Indium, another rare element, is a common ingredient in transparent conductive films for PV devices, and its use is expected to rise over the coming decades. However, depleted mineral deposits and low rates of recycling threaten to exhaust the indium stocks before the end of the century. Researchers therefore are looking to ways to use abundant materials that can be processed in solution to make efficient devices with little toxic waste. For example, carbon-based electrodes and layers of less precious metal. Again though, we come back to the problem that at present such designs are often less efficient than the current deployed silicon-based technologies. Where does this all leave us then? And frankly, what's next? Well, the huge success of silicon panels has become a hurdle for emerging technologies. The manufacturers of silicon-based PV devices share materials, equipment and practices with sibling industries such as computing. On the flip side, developers of printable devices are isolated, and the maturity of the silicon industry means there's little urgency to develop alternatives. Consequently, capital investment and product commercialisation are perceived as risky, given that printable PV devices are still in development. And government funding, therefore, is needed to catapult such devices from a nascent to competitive state, as happens in China with the silicon PV industry. And market penetration, therefore, should develop in stages. Early printable PV devices should target weaknesses in the current silicon-based technologies, thinking here of the poor performance in low light and lack of portability. The next wave, therefore, should complement silicon solar cells and ideally integrate with them. For example, silicon perovskite devices would harvest a greater generation of incoming solar light than the silicon devices alone. If printed technologies can capture just 5% of the PV market, their advantages should ensure they play an ever-increasing part in meeting global demands for renewable energy.